This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm at a hotel in Shoreditch. I'm in Sunny Edwards' room. Uh, it's one day away from fight night. Your call, cool. Capital Games, MTK show live on Box Nation. How you doing, Sonny? Yeah, really good. Obviously had the weigh-in earlier. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just not much too much to say about that. Just had the weigh-in. I think it's got a little heated. Not too bad, though. Um, some words were... Were, like traded um but i think it shows really like this whole sort of angle about embarrassing me embarrassing myself me being bitter and angry i think it really showed in a bad way there today um the kid wouldn't shake my hand even with his coach albert and and wbo rep would like shake his hand and then he wouldn't like when we did our face to face as soon as it, it was over, he ran off. He was gone, and then they called him back to do the one when he turned to the camera. Like He's very a bit all over the place at the moment. Um, he was saying, oh, you're fat. You look like you ain't trained. And I was just like, what? For you, I haven't. Do you know what I mean? I don't need to train to beat you. Um, obviously, I've trained very hard. Um, but super flower is very easy for me to make. Um, didn't have to do anything yesterday. Didn't have to cut food, anything like I ate yesterday. Um, water. I woke up and went for a walk this morning and I think I lost point six on a walk, you know, a half an hour walk. Like my body was my metabolism was burning it. It's easy. Um but yeah, like he says I look a bit fleshy, but anyone that knows me, that's been me my whole career. Do you know what I mean? Like um but he looks very drawn at the weight. He looks very, very tight on the weight. Um and the fact that he's acting a bit out of character, um, I think shows more than anything. He was talking about in the interview with him yesterday uh, this is all normal for him. Like, there's no dislike. Um, oh, I'm in Sunny Z, but I think you could see how calm I was there. I was just smiling, looking at him, laughing, everything he was saying. I wasn't saying anything to him, but I was replying to everything he was saying. Just like that comment he made yesterday. Oh, Sonny's been trading with every single person that messages him. If he really sitting there thinking that these people are getting into med, he's laughing, I will just never let anyone have the last say about anything, whether it's a Ryan Farag, a Paddy Barnes, or some fake account, I will reply to everything. And when I have, like, these mad, random, like, 17, 18-year-olds sort of calling me ugly or something, and then I'll just go on their page and find a picture of their bird and pull it up, and then I have everyone terrorising and I'm like, that, for me, is just, like, a laugh. Do you know what I mean? Like, I would never start being disrespectful to anyone that hasn't, hasn't come at me. So if he's banking on me being that emotionally invested, I think that's probably why he got frustrated today, because everything he was saying, I'd had an answer for, so... I just want to pick up on a comment you said. You said, to beat him, you don't have to train properly. Do you truly believe that? Yeah, of course I don't. <laughs> I train very hard. Um, and if he's expecting me to flag, I've had 50-odd odd fights, amateur and pro. Mm. Um, done hundreds and thousands of rounds of sparring, up and down gyms all around the country, different countries. There will never be a story of me... Well, I've never gone down in anything, touch wood. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've never gone down anywhere in any sparring. I've never started flagging. I've never called sparring early. These things have never, ever happened. Um, so if he's expecting me to slow down, down the stretch, if that's his game plan, which he... Reading between the lines, it's kind of what he was suggesting yesterday. It's going to be like a fly and then he's going to get me. Um, <laughs> quite simply, I don't really get got. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong, everyone can get hit, everyone can get caught. But not only am I a hard fighter to hit, because I've got very good reactions, I've got very good speed, um, and I'm good at reading fighters, but even when I have been clipped with shots before, I'm good at tying people up, creating space, using the whole ring, um, and I'm very good at changing up, you know, from moving around to sort of sitting, but in and out. Like, the op I think what will be the biggest surprise for him is the actual amount of opportunity he has to land a shot whilst being getting caught very regularly. Mm. Um, and, of course, I've trained hard. I've been sparring for 12-plus weeks. I was helping out fighters, some in my gym, some out of my gym. Decent level, good level fighters as well. Um, yeah, my body shape isn't the best, but as Tony Bellew said, do you know what I mean? The athletes don't make the, the fittest and... And like he said, I think, oh, I heard he's fast. Well, one, he's been in the ring with me, he knows how fast I am. 
but like track, if you ask anyone I've ever been on a track from a good runner, anyone I've done long distance from a good runner, Istan Mountains in Marbella, one of the best, the only person that ever was in front of me was my brother, do you know what I mean? Um, so if he's banking on fitness or drawing me into a fight, he's really got his chips stacked on the wrong side of the table because them things ain't happening. Before I come on to the interview I did with him yesterday and some of the comments he was making, what actually happened um, at today's weigh and then afterwards with your brother and him? Uh, well, the footage is already uh, is already out there. Um, I found post it, MTK posted it, Box Nation have posted it. Um, we passed each other in the hotel lobby. Mm. Obviously, all of his people are with him. So Albert, his coach, so, like he says, he used to train me. Um, still very, very friendly with him. Okay. Um, very friendly. I sat down in the lobby for like 20 minutes with Albert's dad yesterday. Um, and then when Ryan went for his hot bath, which we overheard him, because obviously he's struggling for weight, um, then sat with Albert for about 15 minutes and spoke to him. Because um, at the end of the day, this boxing, I'm not getting emotionally invested. Do you know what I mean? And I think this morning when he saw me before the weigh-in, we bowled over, I just looked at him. Um, I'm not scared of no Ryan Farag, like, Trust me, if I was scared of someone, I wouldn't be getting in the ring with them, do you know what I mean? Um, and I'm yet to face that, or find that person that I'll be too scared to get in the ring with. I think I've shown that. Um, but yeah, went straight over. He said something about, oh, you've got a spring in your step. And I was like, yeah, and I'm much bigger than you. Because you can see by height-wise, I'm bigger than him. Even though I made the weight easy. He's ripped, he's lean. But I think he's killed himself to get down to this weight. And by constantly posting about how easy it's been and all the food that he's been eating all the way through the build up, like who are you reassuring? Like I know what I'm eating's good. I know my energy levels are good. I know I'm eating a lot, three, four meals a day every day, and my hydration good. I don't need to tell anyone else. I know that, and it's gonna show. It's gonna show by my fitness levels and how strong I am in it tomorrow. Mm. But when someone needs that, they need that like affirmation. They need to keep posting out there. Who are you trying to kid? Because while I'm, I'm not asked what you're doing, you could be starving yourself for weeks, you could be eating like king for weeks, it's not going to change the result. Um, and I think that comes mainly from his mental weakness. Like he saw us in the reception, he said that, then was looking at the floor. Um, I went and shook everyone's hand, Albert, um, Albert's dad, and then all the sort of Kazakhs that um, Albert's looking after with Rubio, um, all the fighters. Like very respectful, and I don't think he really liked that. That they they showed a level of respect, um, and yeah, he didn't say nothing else. I was stood right next to him, looking at him at one point. Like could have touched his shoulder, and he was looking like straight ahead, like I weren't there. Um, then we just skipped off down, had a little walk down to the golf course. Um, so yeah, he, he could have said anything there, but he's acting very out of character. I think that's kind of obvious. Like you haven't really seen this like this trash talking with me like it's been already quite two years into a pro game it's quite a common theme so um for yeah, him to be saying about oh I'm in his head da, da, I think it showed today like, how angry he was he was snarling at me like I don't think he realised he was doing it his arms were shaking and he was going oh you're shaking if you look at the video his arms don't stop moving they're up and down like that um and yeah he, he promised me he was going to bring me a toy out of a kinder egg and he didn't so I was a bit disappointed um he promised me that actually, so we know right Farrag's a liar. Do you know what I mean? Um, I told him I had a present for him. I bought him an orange. <laughs> a lot of people ask why I bought him the orange. When he boxed in Liverpool in his hometown, MTK Liverpool show, they made it a day before weighing just for his fight to try and get him under the super flyweight limit to qualify him to fight for the British. He didn't make the weight, but he got close. He killed himself to make the weight. Um, I've no, I'll. I spoke to people that was in the gym with him whilst he was making that weight. Mm. And then he blamed it on getting food poisoning from an orange after his weighing. It had his stomach all messed up and that made him being sick all night. And that's why he nearly got stopped when he beat Jose Hernandez 58-57. And everyone that was there who watched it, I watched it on, I think it was an MTK YouTube or something like that, but it's since been removed. Um, I wonder why that is, but... It was a draw. Do you know what I mean? Farrag won the first three rounds comfortable, but then blew a casket bad, and, and he got his arse handed to him. He had um, Derry Matthew shouting in the corner, take a knee, and you could hear that loud, as clear as day. Because there was no noise. He nearly got pulled off the show an hour before, because he'd only sold 20 tickets in his hometown. Mm. Um, so, yeah, just one of those things. 
Yesterday he was saying he has no sort of hatred towards you. You're the one emotionally caught up in things and he's got no emotional investment in it. What's your sort of comment on that? Well, I think like, today it's proved the opposite. Like, he was so angry even after he was going, I had to stop myself from... He was walking around doing this mad laugh, sounded like Jimmy Carl was in the room and kept clapping. And I went, are you all right? You've got nervous twitch or something. He kept doing this mad clap, like... And he was laughing, but... is. Is I heard his coach Albert say to him about six or seven times, like let's say let's save it for tomorrow. He was getting embarrassed. Um, his coach was like, getting embarrassed of him, and I weren't gunning for him, but everything he said, he's gonna get a reply, like I said before. Um, but you could see the the anger in his face, like he was sort of spitting the venom of his words. Um, and you could just me, I was laid back in there, probably like tensing out, like I didn't like didn't have to flex, I didn't I didn't do nothing. I just stood there, normal right as day, because. Ryan Farrell getting in the ring with me tomorrow, it's just another day in the office. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't like him. I don't not like him. I nothing him. He holds no space in my mental. There's very actually no, there, there's nothing he could say to me to get under my skin. Because anything he tries, it sort of bounces bounces back off. He can't talk about my boxing. I won ABA title, he didn't. Um I got on G B he didn't. Um he can't talk about my pro career apart from I haven't boxed anyone. Really, he's not beat anyone. He beat Jamoy. Yeah, he looks decent, but he made... That Jamoy's name was being a good loser. Everyone he, he boxed that was good, he lost to, but was but was in a good fight. And I think, really, that's Farag's level. The same. He, Lee Askins beat him, obviously, Karen Guifi and Ryan Burnett. And he's made most of his name from being a good loser. He beat Jason Booth, who was in something like his 55th fight. Jamoy, yeah, beat a good loser. The three fighters he's fought really on his thing, he's lost to. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying by any stretch of imagination I've fought anyone as a pro, because I haven't, and I've been very vocal with that. And this whole WBO European title, I don't go around spouting on the best in Europe, because that's, that's just really not true. Of course it's not. Um, it's just one of those sanctioning body titles. They get your world ranking... Because I've got the promotional backing to put me in for the title. Like, I'm not dark. I'm not... Like, yeah, it's a title. And I'm proud of winning it. Then they said, no, Ryan wants to fight. Because at the end of the day, it was going to be like another six weeks for purse bids. Both of the fighters had fights if Ryan didn't pull out. But Jay Harris was fighting Ross Murray. And then the fight weren't going to happen until January earliest. So we took the fight. And I know for a fact it's going to be better money fighting me than it would be Jay Harris. Um, because of like his back stick, you know, both MTK fighters, the headline, everything, it, it worked out. Mm. Um, but he chose to fight me over guaranteed British titles. Well, six weeks late, the purse bids come and no one went in for it. No promoter went in for Harris Ferry. And I don't know if that's down to the fact that they both already got fights, Farrick has to get through me first, or the lack of interest in that particular fight, I don't know. Um, but when this come up, I messaged him on Twitter, Farag, because we had no back and forth before this. Um, and all I said was, I respect you for taking the fight. Good luck in camp. That's all I said. And he replied with, thanks, squirrel face. And I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then he brought up, um, talking about class, he brought up like sleeping with my brother's ex-girlfriend, months after they'd broken up. Like, as in, like, he, he's, like, big thing, and I was just thinking, that's never going to affect me. Like, like, do you understand where I'm coming from? Was like, that mentioned he, today as well? Um, that's what he, he was saying to Charlie. Yeah. He was like, oh, you piped up now. And it's just like, one, it didn't even bother my brother that much, because my brother ended up, like, getting back with him for a few months, and it didn't work out. They went to separate ways, you know what I mean? Um, but that's all he said my, about my teeth and and that that's all he said throughout the whole build up of this. So I'm just there sitting like there's no substance there. Just picking this back up with Sonny, yeah, Karen where you where you left off. Let um, see so yeah, like I just said that, that was funny. Um see if you have a bad performance, anyone can have a bad performance. The best fighters in the world can have a bad performance on off day. If you have one, you, you you take it on the chin and you move on, you don't start spouting excuses mm. I'm like don't take the fight um, 
and he he's really amped up high you're looking terrified you lad he I've never been scared to get in a boxing ring. Anyone that I've trained with, anyone I've trained next to can vouch for that. I'll spar any and anyone. The boys up GB know that I took a fight at a week's notice at the weight above against World Series of Boxing Kazakhs. Didn't get to fight because the team won and I was the wild card. But I'm not scared of anything to do with boxing because I suppose if people are scared of getting hurt, I know that I'm capable of that. Yeah, I might go into bitch mode and not win the fight, but I could not get hurt if I didn't want to, because I know I've got that capability. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think there's too much more to say on the fight. I think there's been a lot of talk, like sort of just bitching back and forth. No, nothing too deep, though, nothing too serious. Um, just today I went to shake his hand after the weigh-in. Nah, I'm not shaking his hand. Walked off, not shaking, people calling him back. Nah, shake his hand, like, I'm there. I, I shook my own hand in, in, in the end. <laughs> Like, so I mean, I'm not gonna leave myself hanging. Um, yeah, so him saying that Sonny is is like really, I've I've got into his head. Like, this is all easy for me. I'm this boxing guru who, who steps through this, and it's nah, miles off. And I think it showed there today in a big way. Um, some of the videos don't really do it justice because it just shows the head to head and it cuts at certain points. But even like. When we went to the WBO meeting, he was trying to, we was just there signing our signatures and, and having a little speaking to with both our coaches. And he was just going, You're looking petrified there. Yeah. And just like, Everything off camera as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, he, he didn't, like, when was in the venue, but when was in the hotel lobby, he didn't really say anything. I just said, oh, You look small, you. Because he shrunk. He, he, looked, he looked really stocky at Bantam weight. He looks tiny. He's held his weight for too low for me, for too long. And he shrunk in stature. Mm. Um, like, yeah, he, he's obviously more lean. Um, but my arms look bigger, my shoulders look bigger. Um, he looked really bad on the weight. I've had quite a few, like, boxers, boxing people. Like, he looks drained. But you know what, it's, it's neither here nor there, though. Because, obviously, he's going to have 36 hours to pure for fuel up. And I'm expecting... I'm expecting him to come in quite big. As soon as he weighed in, he had uh, about six porridge pots, I think. <laughs> Seeing that, seeing that absolutely hammering him down. Um, but yeah, I was in no rush because I haven't really taken nothing out. You know, mm. like this weight season. I was, remember, I was a 49 kilo amateur and I could get down to light flyweight. But if no one's going to fight me at flyweight, there's going to be no one to fight me at light flyweight. Mm. So I just fight at this because I'm confident. If there was a fight at Bantam weight I was confident with, I'd fight at that. Do you know what I mean? It's, that's going to weigh my career is going to be because I'm ambitious. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking to have a long career. I'm not not caring about protecting records um, just looking to put in a good performance here to sort of be my like well here I am now I'll take notice do you know what I mean because Ryan Farrag is a good fighter and I think in a roundabout way he must rate me to a certain degree because what did he say he said um, beating Sonny will put me back to where I was before do you remember him saying that yeah I well, do back, back for world title so if he thinks a victory over an 8-0 and 22 year old Sonny Edwards puts him back to where he was what was that a European champion a proper European champion as well a win against Jamoy um, he described it as a close loss against Brian Burnett I don't think he said so. I think he held his own against Burnett he lasted a distance I think that's a, the, the, as much credit you can give him because he Burnett was never in no trouble I'm not saying he didn't do good work because he did when Burnett stood in front of him Farag let like four or five punch combinations he looked good I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not taking nothing away from him but he wasn't no close fight. Holding his own maybe a bit much. Burnett did and dictated what he wanted to do. Mm. But in a roundabout way, I take that as a compliment because beating me gets him back to where he was before. Okay? So you rate me that much. This isn't just like, oh, I'm easy, I'm going to roll through him. This is like, oh no, this is me coming back. And sort of stating and then pushing for world titles. So, yeah. And for me, it's a good name on record. Finally, people won't be saying, oh, yeah, box no one. Um... And which isn't for want of trying, do you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And to headline the show. Mm. Like, we could have waited for, like, a, a slot on one of their BT cards. Because the fight's good enough to warrant it. The build-up's been good enough. There's, I generally think, as I know if I'm lying, because there's been some good MTK shows already, but at the MTK Box Nation ones, I think this one has the most interest with the main event. 
Michael McKinson and Sam Maness also on there, the, the Olympians. It's a good show. Mm. And to be headlining it, my first headline and something I've always wanted to do, that's been like a goal of mine. Something I didn't necessarily think would have happened because, you know, these flyweights and super flyweights can go their whole career about headlining. Mm. Boxing on good cards. Um, You're live on Box Nation as well. That's what I mean. Headline is live on Box Nation. Um, so, yeah, like there's a few like boxing bucket lists ticked off, I suppose. Um, but yeah, sort of this is my, like me showing my, the platform now. And then, like I said, we could have waited for a TV slot on, on like, I don't know, a PT? London card. Yeah, on like a London card or like a Leeds card or something yeah. like that. Um, maybe squeeze that a bit more money for the pair of us. But I think the opportunity and so not being the star, but the, the, the main, like the main attraction of a, of a card, it mm. just sort of just adds to it a bit. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, it, it makes it makes it good, and and that's for both of us. And we both played a good part in building this fight up. I think. Um, Definitely. I was a bit shocked at the odds, and I've spoke, spoken about it. And obviously, they're absolutely immaterial. I, I'm not suggesting for anything that they're. Oh, oh I'm, I'm favourite means I'm gonna win. Um, but I was shocked at him. I thought mm, even or maybe him being a slight favourite, you know, the experience. Um, but you know, they're a bit here or there because the bookies don't really know what they're talking about. Like, <laughs> I've won about two and a half grand in the last couple of shows. Like they're, they're always with boxing, they have a clue. Oh, no. Oh, especially like the smaller fights. Mm. Like a fight like this, I thought, oh, they could get this like a bit wrong. And and obviously, in my opinion. But no, I'm quite heavy a favourite. And I think people have still been putting me in their accumulators. Because I've had loads of betting slips sent to me. And um, anyone giving me stick now, and I support them, goes, oh, show me your bet slip. Oh, I'm, I'm not betting. Oh, well, them odds are good. Put 100 quid on, you're winning like 700 quid or something. Like 600 quid. Like, pff. Like, there's a couple of things he said that he's got the edge on you. Um, one was that you're a kid and he's got the experience, etc. cetera, big fights. And two, your previous trainer, which you've touched upon, Albert, is obviously now his trainer and that he's going to give, I don't know, inside info uh, to Ryan. Firstly, let's talk about the kid comment. Number one, kid. Um, I think I've operated at a level of physical ability and mental ability above my years for a while now. Um, I won a senior NBA title my first year of doing it. He never won one. He got to a final and got beat by Martin Ward. And he actually described me. He was like, oh, you're a proper like Martin Ward you are. I sparred him. That's the sparring. I need something that keeps me switched on. Like, like he gave me props back then. I don't think he would give me him now, saying I just held um, and ran. But, um, yeah, I don't really buy too much into that kid thing. Yeah, I'm only 22. Are you uh, just trying to get in your head? not going to work though if he was if that's what the angle I think he's trying to convince himself because he's like oh son is going to tie out he's going to get mentally invested oh, he's, he's young and it's like he's making excuses for himself why not that you're just a better boxer you've not heard he says yeah, he's better than me in, in all these edges but he's not going to go oh, I'm going to beat him because I can do this or I can he's just sort of trying to like reaffirm himself and, and uh, like just assure himself and the second point what did he say sorry about uh, oh, Albert being direct trainer yeah I think trainers a stretch, if I'm honest. Danny Vaughan, up to a, a point, was my trainer when I was out there. Um, and then for just reasons here or another, he was out of the country a lot. He had fighters. He went to America, something else. Leading up to my debut. The last four four weeks leading up to my debut, I was over in Marbella. Mm. Um, and Albert took me on pads a couple of times a week. Um, but gave me some real good time as well, like 45 minute sessions, hours. So yeah. He was a brilliant coach. And I rate Albert so highly. Um, but there's only so much you can do for the talent you have in front of you. Do you know what I mean? Um, but that was two years ago. Um, and he trained me for so four weeks up to my debut. And then he trained me for about two weeks. And he was in my corner for my debut. And um, he trained me for about two weeks after because I had my second fight two weeks later, three weeks later. Um, but I was very, very amateurish and very green then. I didn't transition over. And I think you can look at my performances as I've come in eight, like how different they are. Um, so if he's really banking on knowledge from two years ago, I think that's a bit... Mm, that's neither here nor there, because we actually sparred last year, so why is he not thinking, oh, I'm going to use what I did in sparring to him, not knowledge from two years ago. Well, I'm using how I've seen him fight, 
the spa from a year ago where I think it was very one sided, clear landing shots. Physically, he was obviously he was he was in there. Do you know what I mean? But saying I was just holding him. If he's as strong as he's making out, he would have been able to throw me off and just absolutely rough me up because that's where if this what he's saying is true, that's where he would succeed. No, but um, apparently I was sparring a different Farag, like I like we spoke about before. Um, it was like a bollock. That's him basically admitting in a roundabout way that yeah, he got the better of me, but I weren't fit. I weren't. Um, I did fight five weeks later, but I only found out the day before I went over to my bear. Actually, so I hadn't actually been in training before that. Mm. I was going over there for a holiday, and it turned into like a, a bit of an in between. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, he's just. I think he's clutching the straws a bit there. Just a few more things. Just moving away slightly. What do you make of the MCK Fox Nation deal? It's great exposure oh, for you, lads. The best. Like, it's really good. I'm in a brilliant position with Frank Warren and MTK. Mm. Like, the, like, really strong. Because I'm one of those fighters that have really promoted myself. Obviously, I've had the opportunities, but I've never boxed live on TV yet. Um, I've, I've been shown a couple of times, you know, just like here and there, but never boxed live, never full fight sort of thing. And I feel like I've built a decent following, a decent name. Mm. A lot of people don't like me, a lot of people do like me. I'm, I'm like that in my day to day. That's not me acting out of character. I am a, a prick a lot of the time. I think that sort of people either take to me or they don't. Everyone's always, that, that, that's been me since I was young. Um, and so I'm not acting out of character. This is all very normal, but I think you can see him going from humble to trash talking to being angry to being can't like he's confused me just speaking taking it in my stride um, but yeah I think I've promoted myself well this however puts me in a position where if there's an opportunity to be had there's two options top end of an MTK bill on Box Nation Frank Warren BT Frank Warren bill. Yeah. really am I going to be headlining the O2 no. Will I get a TV slot about 8 o'clock? Yeah. This fight could definitely do that, but it, it would do no more than that. Do you know what I mean? Maybe at one of his York Hall shows. Maybe like co headline Maybe Frank Warren. But then again, probably not, because he'd have like a Dubois or anti Yard. Mm. Um, so yeah, it puts me in a really good position. And I, obviously I love boxing on Frank shows. Um, the Copper Box with Javonta Davies was an unreal experience and the Michael Conlon running Belfast even yeah. though I'm not Belfast's favourite son because of the whole Paddy Barnes but I was I was well quite widely accepted there actually I had a lot of like laughs with a few of the few of the like crowd and that oh really you know? yeah like it. yeah like there was one group of pricks um, <laughs> where there was three of us getting a soft drink at the bar after my fight and about 12 of them were giving it mouth and but that's neither here nor there. Like I said, it's just that. But that one group was an isolated incident. No, nothing like kicked off or anything. Do you know no. what I mean? Um, but yeah, widely accepted and a good laugh. Oh, when you are fighting Paddy, then oh, he don't like you because that like the Irish people are a nice bunch. You know what I mean? They're like, I've got a lot of friends with a lot of the boxers over there, and I'm not going to name any names. But on the whole, Paddy Barnes thing, he he's blocked boxers that have been in the same like national team as him because. They chat to me, and I think that's just ridiculous. Like, I'm not gonna name no names. Um, I don't need to. I only found out the other day, and I was just a bit like, "Are you serious?" Like, um, but yeah, like I like a few of the lads over there. Um, I'm looking forward to the the card when a lot of them are boxing. It'll be good to see Paddy Barnes come back. What shape he gets in? Twenty second December. Twenty second December. Um, I don't think I'll be there. Unfortunately, I think Charlie's fighting that day, but mm. we're not sure yet. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things. All right, listen, tomorrow night, if you come through, obviously you're planning to, do you still want that Paddy Barnes fight? Of course I do, more more than ever. Um, I'm not trying to disrespect him, because I'm not. Because like Ryan Farag, I don't like him, I don't not like him. There's nothing there, but this boxing is a business. If I perform really well, and I'm talking like a stoppage performance or an every round clear, like no chance in hell, I think a lot of people open their eyes and think, oh, well, that's why Paddy Barnes really didn't want to fight Sonny Edwards. Okay. Because um, the offer was made to him, because I know it was. Not necessarily I don't have money or anything like that, but I know the offer was made because I had a conversation with 
I mean, Frank Warren and, 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 and these people and MTK and it was like, okay, we'll, we'll put it to him. He even had a conversation with his trainer, my old trainer, Danny, who I still get on with, do you know what I mean? Like, um, and we just had like a, a civil, let me chat about it, before his world title fight. But, um, yeah, I think maybe him losing has got me uh, like a very small step closer. I think if he won the title then, I would have got laughed at heavily, like you're fighting at five o'clock and under undercard and I just won a world title. Like, you know what I mean, and fair enough, but he didn't. Then he said he initially wanted a world title again straight away, which I was quite vocal about. I was thinking, yep, your amateur background probably earned you an early title shot. Yes, he didn't come through it. So now, really, for me, you've got to build to a certain extent. Mm. Bear in mind, you've got all the promotional backing, you've got the TV backing, you've got the financial backing. Big name. So you could pick up a few decent wins and build up to it. You don't, why, why rush straight into it? Pick up, pick up some actual professional ring experience. Um, now he said recently that he wants a world title fight, but he wants two or three fights before it, which I think is sensible. But he made it very clear that he wanted to fight a hard, tough, Mexican, no, <laughs> something like that. So, why not fight domestic? Like I think everyone's scratching their heads and thinking, there's dom- good domestic fights out there. Why, why completely like sidestep them all? Is there reason? That's what I'd be asking. And when I was saying, if he gets another world title shot, that's a fast straight away because you can't sort of get rolled over in four. Don't get me wrong, Rosales is a good, mm. good fighter. I I do rate him to a certain extent, but like Selby beat him, Yafai beat him, fairly convincingly. Um, so that just shows the level Selby hasn't fought for a world title yet he's making his like mini break come back to the day after me I think and I wish him the best for that I do like Andrew Selby and yeah he's a world champion so it shows that it's a good level still but like what has Paddy Barnes done in a pro ring to deserve it if I beat Farag and beat him well especially there cannot be a single murmur that Paddy's done more in a professional ring than me because really we've got very kind of similar standards of opposition like he apart from his loss our standards are very, very similar. Um, well, won't be after tomorrow night for you. After Farrah, you can't say that I'm not in front of that. Mm. Boxing at a weight above my own, which I don't think we see him do. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, Farrah's a tough fighter, but a domestic fighter, a fight where things can go wrong. I'm not like, oblivious to that fact. And it's like one of those risk fights that people want to see you take. Maybe I am cornered into, even though I've got a good promotional backing, a good managerial backing, I won't have three times Olympian. So... And a two times bronze medalist. So I'm not expecting to get the same treatment as him. But things have eventually got to give. And I think everyone would rather see him face someone like me than some any Vasquez or or something along these lines. Because it makes sense. Bigger money as well, obviously. For sure. For sure. Um, more exciting. See how he deals actually in the build-up of a proper fight. Because you're going to get them eventually. Like, you can't just keep boxing people with who don't speak English so they can't say anything. Do you know what I mean? Like... Like, look how vocal this Farag thing's been with. There's been no press conference. There's been no public workout or anything like that. And we, I think we built it well. Mm. There's quite a lot of people talking about it. Do you know what I mean? So, it's one of those things. I want to talk about another show of time. I know it was a couple of... Uh, he beat Danny Garcia, claimed the WBC title. Uh, do you still speak to him? Um, here and there, like, I wished him, like, well. And congratulations. And he messaged back. And I've seen his dad, Kenny, a few more times. Oh, and yeah. Spent a bit of time with him actually when Wild and Ortiz fought. Mm. Me and my um, my pal Levi, he boxes uh, oh, yeah, two and a yeah. yeah. And he um <coughs> he sat with us throughout the whole fight and watched it, and then after and had a proper like, do you know what I mean? I don't want to say picked his brain, but do you know what I mean? He sort of opened up to a few things that I wouldn't have known otherwise, and um and sort of talked business side of the sport, how they'd invested so much in the WBC. So when everyone was going, oh, fuck Spence for the IBF. Yeah, IBF. He was like, well, we've invested this much money for the eliminated final. Elim- so why are we then going to jump, lose all our ranking there when that's just a hard fight? Do you know what I mean? Um, so a lot of things. But yeah, he's the sort of look up to. Just his humility. He's got a lot of humility. He's a very like, so gracious person. He's like a cool person. guy, Sean Porter. He just oozes class, to be yeah. honest. Um, and it, I remember I put on... I wrote like an article um, just before this fight got announced about that fight actually Danny Garcia and I called it absolutely spot on I just put that one out there I called it absolutely <laughs> spot on you can still find that um, 
But yeah, like, I, I do look up to him in a big way. Mm. I would like to go out and train. I've been invited to go over, but it's just, like, it's just hard. Mm. I mean, because um, when I'm out of camp, I'm still in the gym. We've got me, my brother, and Carl Yusuf, who's just won the yeah. English flyweight title. And one of us is always fighting at some point, so we're needed for sparring and got a few other lads in the gym, so it's hard to get away and we're always learning in the gym from mm. Grant. Um, yeah. So it's hard to get away. But who knows, after this fight, I might go for a weekend away in Marbella, go show around my belt. <sighs> All right, Sonny, you've given me just under an hour of your time. Mm. Um, listen, get yourself down to your call tomorrow night, MTK London in show. Or if you can't, tune into Box Nation Live because it's going to be a good fight between Sonny and Ryan. It's a good undercard as well, as you've said. Anything you'd like to add on IFL TV? Um, seeing as it's really long now, I'm not conscious about time. Um, I just want to say a big, massive thank you to my sponsors. Um, do you know what? Let me get my shorts. Yeah. This is an exclusive. No one's seen these yet. <laughs> Did no one seen them yet? Go on. Right, IFL look. exclusive. IFL exclusive. Look. Good look at them. Very nice. Any guesses? What colour do you normally go for? Oh, I, I go for themes, mate. I don't. Oh, do you not care? Made, made by Susie Wong, but um, just obviously Matrix star. I'm a dad to be, so I've got the baby's oh, name printed in. Yeah. I've got um my surname there, Showtime, and a few other things. <laughs> but I just want to quickly go through that. Reminded me, I want to thank my sponsors um that keep me full time. Um, when fights aren't coming through, I've still got a good wage coming in, which is massive. Um. MOQ boxing, these tracksuits, team tracksuits. Um, I've had a lot of good compliments actually. Um, the printing was, was done by Susie, so that's why they match all everything. Um, yeah, MOQ boxing, um, good company. Get on to them. They've just been supporting quite a few fighters from like ground roots to elite, which I like. Um, Rapid Response, another one of my full time sponsors. Um, Graham and Michelle and everyone up there. They're up Newcastle. Um, the logistic company. Empire Pro Tape. Um, I'm actually their only sponsor boxer, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah. Proper nice. sponsor, not just getting free tape, you know what I mean? They look after me. They have ever since they came into the thing. Um, Dean and um, all the team down there, I go and see them. They're only based 15 minutes away from where I live. Um, very good people, keep my hands protected. With Jamie Sheldon, who's like a big part mm. of the Empire, he's my cut man and rap man. Um, go Pack. Um, who has been there since day one. Um, also sponsored my brother. Um, it's that big plush villa we get to stay in in Marbella. And we're going and causing a, a scene over there. Um, <laughs> but he's, he's a legend, Si. Um, and Shire Electrical Nart. Um, another full-time. Been there since fight one. Uh, Tanya and Millen. Um, seconds Out, who helped me design all my kits. Um, they're up from Scotland. Um, and then, obviously, finally, I've got the Steel City Gym. So if you look at them, I've got quite good, like, a globe, like, a national base. I've got, Loads. I've yeah. got, like, Sheffield, or Rotherham-based, Bristol, and, and in, based in China, and mm. all where as well. Nottinghamshire, Scotland, Edinburgh. Obviously, MTK Global, we can't forget them. They're taking over the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, MOQ, which is in Leicestershire, and Rapid Response in Newcastle. So I've got support from all over, do you know what I mean? And, the majority of these people are coming down to my fight show and support there as well. Um, you know, I'm just in a really good place mentally, physically, even though Ryan called me fat, which is a bit uncalled for. Um, but yeah, just I'm, I'm happy, do you know what I mean? So mm. I'm in a good place. All right, no problem. Omar Ahmed for IFL TV with MCK Global with Sonny Edwards fighting Ryan Frag tomorrow at your call, as I said. Um, yeah, thank you, Sonny. Yeah. Bye.